Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of what is algebraic geometry. Today, I'm really just starting with algebraic geometry in the sense of algebra. We already had a little bit of this, but now comes maybe the first main concept, algebraic concept, uh, we need to learn or we want to learn or people consider while doing algebraic geometry, which is called the coordinate ring. We'll see what that is. But essentially, it's this idea of, well, polynomials are important. Well, polynomials are important and kind of the most boring variety out there is old space. Well, the corresponding ideal is zero ideal. And yeah, polynomials are the polynomial functions on that space. So maybe we want to have an analog for varieties. And yeah, that's what we are trying to do. Um, but essentially the idea that I'm trying to sell that I think algebraic geometry, at least, at least in my very biased opinion, algebraic geometry tries to sell is that sometimes a difficult object is better presented as maybe even losing some information, but better presented using some easier concepts. Um, here in my stolen picture, there are some a lot of apple varieties, apple types, a lot of a lot of them actually. Uh, I could have used both. There are a tremendous amount of both. Uh, anyway, apple varieties, and sometimes it's really difficult to, to tell which one is which. In particular, I think it's a little bit more like the old-fashioned one, not the ones that are, that are grown in, in large scale. Um, and then it gets kind of difficult, but maybe it actually doesn't matter so much. So sometimes you just want to go from something more difficult to something easier by forgetting the precise type. Maybe that doesn't matter so much and just look at it's an apple. You could go even further by just saying, oh, well, maybe it's just, it just a fruit. But that might be a little bit too much. Um, and kind of trying to find the right balance is what makes the whole story uh, going, a rush to go. So it's kind of the general philosophy that I'm trying to sell, right? That's why I have this Apple example. It's not just in mathematics. In mathematics, you see that all over the place as well. It's in, in all of life. You kind of group things, and maybe in, in the group, it's kind of easier to, to, to just think about it. So in my Apple example, for example. And sometimes there's information loss involved, and sometimes there's not so much information loss involved. Um, if you think about assigning, for example, a dimension to a space, then the dimension is certainly easier to think about um, than the space itself. But there's also a lot of information loss involved. So somehow finding the good, a good balance uh, is kind of key. And yeah, what is a good, good object associated to a variety, right? We like varieties here. If, if you at this point don't like varieties, I certainly have messed up my job. Um, yeah, so hopefully we all like varieties. But they are also pretty difficult. Um, I already have a kind of difficult task to illustrating them with two variables. I have one with three variables today. Oh, I have one with three variables today. But they get kind of really complicated and high dimensional. Um, yeah, so we want to have preferably some easy object, like an algebraic object. So kind of a, a mistake I did, and I think several people do, is kind of thinking algebra, abstract, difficult, but actually abstract equals easy. Uh, like in this case, it's much easier to ask a computer a question about a polynomial than to ask the computer a question about a variety, right? And if you kind of kind of establish that they are the same, then we are in actually good shape. So the question we would like to address is something: what is a good object associated to a variety, which is somehow easier than the variety itself, so easier in some sense, easier graphable, the more down to earth, easier for a machine or something. But it still kind of keeps the spirit of what we want of the variety. And we've already seen this nice behavior of varieties kind of a little bit like ideals and we want to go uh, one step further in, well, in following this idea one step further and here is what i have in mind so i plot here the level sets of two polynomials um i will kind of can pull up the mathematica file it's it, you can also find it in the in the description where i have i share all my files you can find them in the description if you want but I can also just open it and just pull it over in case you're wondering what the polynomials are. It doesn't really matter so much what they are. But anyway, so I have my polynomial f, I have my polynomial g, whatever they are. I plot them as level sets. So every set here, uh, I can zoom out a little bit. Maybe that's easier to see. Every every kind of line here is a certain polynomial equals some constant. Here's, here's g, and they're like really different, as you can see. 
Um, so yeah, so these are clearly not the same polynomials. But if you just ev evaluate them on the variety, in this case, just uh, the, the circle, this is supposed to be a plus, so just the circle variety, so x squared plus y squared minus 1, then they actually are the same. And I really did this, I mean, this looks like I didn't do the job, I just plotted it once. But I actually really plotted both of them, we'll see that picture in a second. So here I really plot both of them on the variety, and you get the same answer. So some polynomials look very different but they agree on some given variety, maybe our favorite variety, like the circle. And yeah, that's somehow an interesting observation. So maybe we should somehow look at polynomial functions on certain varieties, and maybe they're related somehow to ideals. And that's in the, indeed the case. So here's f minus g, and you can see the level set of f minus g, that's our circle, right? Circle of different radios, because it's always f minus g equals some constant. Uh, so constant kinds of kind of various here circles of various ready here, um, and yeah, so we can actually as soon as you're convinced that this is right, it's not so difficult to prove the two polynomials define potentially very different polynomials. Like here in my example, f and g are clearly not the same, um, but anyway, they define the same polynomial on a fixed variety if and only if the polynomials lie in the ideal given by the variety. And that's pretty good, because now we can check whether the two polynomial functions are the same on a variety by checking ideal containment, which is something you can do algorithmically. I'm not going to explain right now how, but you can check this property here algorithmically. So let's say we like that property. And it motivates the definition of this funny coordinate ring, where you just take all polynomials and to mod out the ideal generated by the variety and the point is you get this then this one-to-one -one correspondence and this very nice correspondence here maybe i should use a slightly different color but anyway um between the coordinate ring which is a polynomial thingy just an algebraic object and the polynomials uh on my variety because if i ju just just have a look here they're the same if and only if they lie in the ideal and you kind of kill the ideal so everything that remains somewhat is defines a different polynomial, and you can kind of track how different they are if you know um, where they lie corresponding to the ideal. And that is, again, an algebraic question, which a machine is very happy to solve for you. I'm maybe not very happy. I should be careful with that. So ideal containment is not a computationally super easy task, let's just say it this way, but certainly it's, it's checkable. Much, somehow much easier than the previous uh, question somewhat. And that's always the whole idea, right? You have a question that looks like completely intractable, you push it to something more algebraic, and you at least have an idea what to do. The, the question itself, even in algebra, can be still very complicated. But you kind of reduce the complexity of a question, right? You reduce the complexity of what is the type of an apple to just saying, oh, it's an apple. Something like that. Um, yeah. And yeah, so that's a call to coordinate ring. I'll give you some examples in a second. So, for example, Oh, maybe right now. So, for example, if you have the variety x, y minus 1 equals 0, which is really just a kind of the standard hyperbola, uh, maybe not the standard, it has a name, I forgot what it is, but it's an hyperbola that goes like this. Okay, then it's coordinating because uh, what, is, what, is, what is written here is y is x inverse, it's coordinating will be my, will be just in x and x inverse, which is not a polynomial ring, but some, some different type of uh, object, right? And let me explain again why I get that, because this equation is really just saying, if you just put one on the other side and multiply by y inverse, then you can see x equals y inverse, or the other way around, y equals x inverse, so I can just replace other variables. Anyway, so th by the way, this is usually called a ring, and there's some classical confusion in mathematics that happens quite quite a lot. The things are called rings or groups when they are actually algebras. So this is actually an algebra with coefficients in my field. But anyway, we'll still call it the polynomial ring. No, not the polynomial ring, the coordinate ring. And kind of the nice thing here is it really generalizes this idea. Um, if, well, you have the boring variety, old space, maybe not a very exciting variety, then the coordinate ring are just all polynomials. So in this kind of a relative version, of that that thing relative to a variety or relative to an ideal. 
any gibbet, how you want to formulate it. For example, you get the relative Nullstellen dot, which uh, here is the Nullstellen dot, and the relative one is now type varieties of y correspond to radical ideals in the coordinate ring of y. And the, the map is really just the same. So now we can somehow study polynomials on that space instead of the space itself by looking at usual polynomials, which is kind of a really cool thing. And you could really do that um, algorithmically in practice. Uh, for example, here's a, a 3D plot. Oh, I'm very happy <laughs> about my 3D plot. Keep in mind that everything actually should be over the complex numbers. So this is not really, this is actually cheating and the plot is much higher dimensional. But anyway, I do real plots anyway. Um, and this is clearly not supposed to be hyperbolas. The original idea here was to have hyperbolas, but uh, it's not anymore. So let me call it spheres. Uh, let me call it uh, spheres. Yes. And yeah, so let's do it. So we have two plots here, the blue one and the green one. The green one is just a plane z equals zero. The blue one is the sphere given by x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. And the equator, kind of the intersection in my picture here, so the equator of this picture, that's a circle, is a subvariety of both. You can literally see that in the plot. It's a subvariety of both. And you can check that because the generating ideal of the circle will be a sub, uh, sub in both. It will be an ideal in both of the coordinate rings. So the coordinate ring of the plane is really easy. It's a little bit more difficult to see it in the coordinate ring of the sphere, but maybe uh, not too much. So that's kind of the point. And of course, you might argue now, I can see directly that the circle is a subvariety of both of them. Yes, but that's because my example is really easy. Just think now of a really high dimensional and complicated space. It's certainly much easier to check some kind of ideal containment on an algebraic thing than trying to imagine that um, in, in your head. And, and well, at least if you are like me, then imagining this in your head is really difficult. If you are a geometric expert, maybe that's an, uh, uh, imagining a 504 dimensional space and a very complicated variety in it, maybe that's your type, that's your type of thing. But certainly for a machine and for me, it's then definitely easier to just look at the ideas and then look at the algebra. Anyway, that was a lot, was a lot of ramble. It was a lot of ramble. Uh, I apologize. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will talk to you next time.